my YouTube channel, it is your golden way and there's absolutely no way without going through the way. Amen. And today we are excited, we're shooting a podcast yeah. with an amazing woman. Oh. She can you introduce herself? Oh. <laughs> Hi guys, um, I'm Bupula. Um, yeah, I'm just a girl mm. trying to follow Jesus, mm. you know. Yeah, I think that's simple. I, yeah. I'm just someone that's passionate about speaking God's word and it's such an honor to be here. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, that's me. It's awesome. So I'm just going to set the recording so that we can start. Um, okay. Now we are on live on Anchor, live on YouTube as well. So just before we start, as you guys can tell by the title, we're going to be speaking about identity yeah. and the identity crisis, so so to speak, and this conversation came up when I was prepping to start this podcast, and even the person that's in front is always your guy, so I'll just explain shortly. And um, so, just a long time ago, she kept saying, "Start a podcast," and I was Yo, like, "There's no Yo, way, <laughs> there's no way of starting a podcast. No. It's too much <laughs> admin, which it is. If you could see this room, you would understand that it is too much admin. Yeah. And I was just not yet in that position of starting the podcast, and I just kept delaying it. Hey, until the Lord was like, <laughs> "I said you exactly. must start it," and here we are now, and here she is now. So I, when I thought of a guest, the 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 Lord was like. How about the vessel I, I use to get you to obedience? Mm. And I was like, okay, okay, I know who to ask. I know the first person that said, Lynn, you should start a podcast. And she was so, like, you were so consistent. Like, you didn't even stop. Like, I would yeah. tell her no. And then two weeks later, Waves was like, why don't you start a podcast, man? I'm, I'm always telling you. I'm always telling you. So here we are. I think this is episode six, seven of the podcast, which is a whole journey on its own. Um, but yeah, you can. Give a brief intro to the podcast audience because you gave an intro to the YouTube. To so the topic, or you can get into the topic as well, whichever, whichever you prefer. Okay, so Lynn asked me to, um, as you guys seen by the title, is obviously about identity and identity crisis, as she obviously mentioned, and like Lynn asked me to like talk about it. Now, y'all, <laughs> I study this as a degree, okay, this is my degree in flesh. I study sociology, philosophy, and psychology, okay, and sociology normally deals with, I'm just going to give you a brief, no, yes. as, like, no one cares about it. <laughs> I'm just going to give you guys like a brief, yeah, a brief overview of what sociology is. Um, yeah, so sociology is basically the study of society, right? Mm -hmm. So we normally deal with like, like for instance, masculinity. I remember last year we did gender-based violence as an essay, right? And like why women don't, uh, why most women don't report report cases to the police. Mm -hmm. And like one of the reasons was like because of how the police is, da 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 da. But I remember as doing that essay, like one thing that caught my attention was the term hegemonic masculinity, right? Yeah, it's like what is that, my sister? Big words break it up <laughs> and you know and the hegemonic masculinity is basically like what the society defines what a man is right so that really caught my attention because you know, I don't wanna th these are things that I'm passionate about because you know and you'll see why like I feel I believe God has placed me in that mm -hmm. place to actually bring God into it because I've done talks with my good friend Marlies um, we discussed feminism and different types of feminism and godly feminism as well and um, he hegemonic masculinity like I said is basically like an overview or what the society defines what a man is and it caught my attention because society plays a role or necessarily constructs our reality and how we think and how we perceive things right but being a Christian I always have a problem with that because as yes I'm doing my final year Okay, okay, let's not clap hands because I might be doing pros grad, so you know, okay. But um, even though I'm doing my final undergrad in sociology and all of that, like one thing that I've seen is how the devil has been infiltrating mm -hmm. into the yeah. institution. Like we are Too being much. brainwashed 
on how to think, how to say what is right, what is wrong. Mm. If you speak up, you are wrong. If you mm. if you are wrong, everything you breathe, you're wrong. Like we <laughs> just be conditioned to think a certain yeah, way, and true. it rubs me off the wrong way. Because even in my essence, I'll mention God. I'm like God said He's King. I don't care what you say, but obviously I mention it in like an intellectual yeah. manner. But I've always had like that thing of like wrestling mm-hmm. with society and saying that okay, you say this, but I don't care because this is what the word of the Lord says. And I've, okay, and also mm-hmm. I believe that every Christian mm-hmm. should have some sort of you know, there's being a Christian, right? You say Jesus King, da 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 da, but you need to know how no, I know in the Bible it says like you need to prove your faith, yeah. you need to be ready to give Definitely. an account yeah. of why you believe in this That's true. and I believe like especially in the Christian community, growing up as a Christian like I always thought like you know the world sees us as dumb and brainwashed no. and they think we have no intellect Literally. and we think they think we have no common sense we don't know mm. one plus one is mm. two they just think that oh you just believe God is real that's and that's true. that but the thing is, when you back up, remember, science mm. proves that God exists. Yeah, science follows <laughs> us with the word of God. Like it's just proving you that God exists. Mm. And I've always been intrigued by that of like how there's scientists in the, that are Christian and how there are doctors that are Christian and engineers and all of that. And yet they're so smart, but it just their wisdom and their intellectual points back to God. Definitely. And that's something that I've always been passionate about. Is like how do I necessarily bring God into an not necessarily bring God into an actual intellectual space but mm. how do I point that aspect to God because everything in the world is God that's very true like when you just speak about um, how like society is discipling us I remember yeah. like, there was a sermon when they mentioned that the world is always discipling people yeah. to themselves yeah. and that's why we need to just not only be a church and be discipled exactly. only a church like being a Sunday person it's great that you are going to church but what yeah. are you doing Monday morning that's true. what are you doing when Tuesday when you were yeah. faced with different variations of people and I think that's when the train of identity when it's not just a definition of um, I'm a Christian merely because I go to church there's this yeah. amazing phrase that I've, I've been saying that I am not just a student that's a Christian I am a Christian that's been ordained yeah. to be a student yeah. like for this moment for this season God has said you are a student and I think that just bringing back to what you were speaking about now, the scripture that keeps coming to my mind is Romans 12. Like you, mm. you, you need to be renewed, uh-huh. by the, like transformed by the renewal yeah. of your mind, and your mind needs to be cleaned by the word yeah. of God. Because whether we like it or not, even before there was social media, before there was all these things, there was television, there was That's newspaper. That seems like like the world has always been in the same process of That's manipulating true. you to believe yeah. a certain thing to partic- like just participate in general society because a lot of us don't want to be rejected by society mm-hmm. but the truth is you need to be rejected by society to be accepted by God that's true and I don't think you can ever do both and that's what yes. Paul was speaking about like soft apologetics is a big theme in Christianity mm-hmm. where people need to just if even if it means just defending that the Bible is real because sometimes people go against their concept that you have this big book that has 66 mm. books inside like it's 66 individual books like if they were printed out they'll be thick textbooks like if mm. they were printed out to normal yeah. words and normal tones it would be that and I think that this is a nice introduction to also show I had no idea that this is what she does <laughs> so <laughs> no. so God is very interesting in that way that just to speak on this topic not only do you have intellectual insight mm-hmm. but you have biblical insight because yeah, she's my leader by the way for those that didn't know for those that didn't know she's my urban life leader so it's yeah. always like an honor to just sit under your leadership and just listen yeah. to the wisdom that God has instilled in you yeah. and it's always nice because you and I used to have those conversations a bit yeah. before podcasts were yeah. in the so buzz <laughs> in, the, in the buzz to yeah. church you know that's, that's where true. it all started I'm tearing up because I'm like God is so awesome in the way that he connects people yeah. and this is just now leading into the topic of identity because you know we have a time limit on YouTube a time yes, limit yes, on the yes, podcast yes, yes. So I'm just going to read straight into the scripture that the Lord directed me to to speak about identity. That's in Psalms 109, okay. uh, no, 139. 
at uh, verse 13. It says in verse 13, I put a whole. Hmm. For you are created my for you created my innermost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I am fearless. At, I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in the secret place, when I was woven together in the depths of the earth. Your eyes saw my unformed body. All the days ordained for me were written in your book before one of them come, came to be. How precious to me are your thoughts, God. How vast is the sum of them. Where I count, where I to count them, they would outnumber the grains of sand. When I when I awake, I am still with you. Mm. And what, the first time I wrote to this, um, like, because I studied the Book of Psalms prior, like, a long time, so that's why I didn't like, even prep anything. Because I was like, ha, I know, I know the book to go to because I ate all of my notes and everything. So in the Book of Psalms, basically Psalms one hundred and thirty nine. Uh, David is just like speaking to God in his secret space and he's saying search in me O Lord, find in me what you find that is desirable of me and he goes on this journey of like expressing how God gave him identity mm -hmm. and I would like to go back to the first book of like of the Bible which is Genesis where God makes us in his image yes. and I love this one saying that says that you were actually made before you were created so before you were created God already knew you like he yeah. made you in his image which means mm -hmm. we're a fragment of god literally and that's what the world then well not even just the world only let's be specific it's the devil because <laughs> he knows Is very it well i think so he knows very well um that if he takes you away mm -hmm. from the realization of who you are you will not like you will not step into your destiny. Oh man, that's a wrap for this episode. <laughs> Thank you for joining. You, you will literally walk underneath God's like you 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 just keep searching. Like yes. a lot of people in our generation are searching. That's why I want to call the episode identity crisis because mm. people are searching for identity and their identity is fine. It's actually found in the one thing the rest of the world is in agreement to go against. And who does the world belong to? You know. God created this world for us and mm. he made sure. And I think like the other thing that we always misinterpretate is that concept of how much access is the devil given to us. Mm. And because God does give us like does give the, the enemy access to your life. I mean he does Job. Yeah. Look at Job. And like I'm reading the book of Job and I'm like, yo, Jesus, if you do this to me, it's I, am, right. I am running. It's right. I am running. And just speaking into that, it means that when we are disobedient, when we walk away, when we fall into sin, whether we know it or not, we experience the consequences. Sure, we will receive mercy, we will receive the love, we will receive the grace and goodness of God, but the consequences are still present. That's and when true. it comes to your identity, what the enemy does, he will do exactly what he's been doing for over the like millions of centuries we have existed, which is to make you doubt the goodness of God. Once he makes you doubt how good your God is and how good what he says about you is, yeah. he's like, ha, I have you. There we go. Which is exactly what he does to everyone. He tells yeah. you that, well, you were created like this. You were made in this way. Like some That's of us true. are created in a specific way. And yeah. when it comes to identity, Jackie Hill Perry is always Ooh, like my the, favorite. Oh the my amazing goodness. lady I speak about. Yes. Because her testimony is beyond church. It's beyond mm -hmm. the confinement of yeah. I received Christ in my bedroom. She didn't mm -hmm. receive Christ in front of a whole church of building yeah. or a congregation of people. God came and met her personally. Yeah. Which means there's people out there that are walking with a certain identity crisis mm -hmm. where they're waiting for God to encounter them. And the beauty of God, he will encounter you. The question is, will you obey when he does? That's you know, um, and I just want to hear you. Yeah, what's that? Lynn just took everything. <laughs> And you have the like, whole page. You know page. what? I have three pages for my Lynn said everything. And I'm like, Lord. Wow. Okay, let me, let me see. Um, but yeah, like I definitely understand what you're saying. But like I felt like when I wrote, like I went not necessarily into depth, mm. but because I didn't have time to be fair. I was like, okay, God, you want me to break this down, but time is not on my side. I know you exist outside of time, but I'm limited by time, so you know, but um because I wrote like the so identity, according to Google, mm. is the fact of being who or what a person or thing is. 
Mm. Right? So it's more inward based yeah. than outward based, True. right? And obviously I quoted Genesis 1 verse 26 where God is like, let us make mankind in our image. That's like the most famous verse. And then I wondered, I was like, okay, Lord, like in our image, what does that mean? Like, you created us in our image. People think like we physically mm-hmm. look like God, God but yeah. God is talking about like attributes that mm-hmm. we carry. Because human That's beings, true. we desire love. We have moral, like there's like a moral standard that we live by, like we know right and wrong. Mm-hmm. And that's something that atheists won't necessarily, that's the thing, like I remember, like I used to, there was a point when I got saved, like I used to watch great, like Preston Perry, mm-hmm. you go on the street, he's yeah. like, go on people, yeah, I was like, yeah, yeah I'm like, yo, put me in, coach, put me in. Mm-hmm. So I know like one of the things that like he, or necessarily what apologetics normally like go for is that if you're an atheist, you, mm-hmm. and you say murder is wrong, who are you to say murder is wrong? That's true. Because you have no moral standard. That's so According true. to you, we are just baboons or cells that came in the air and sense. literally you have mm-hmm. no moral standard because so I was like, wow, like th- that goes back to what I was saying. Like, cre- I mean, like Christians should have at least that, like, necessarily, like, apolo- like soft apologetics mm-hmm. where they know that, okay, this is the God that I serve, but why? Because mm-hmm. that's how the devil gets us. Because they're like, yeah, God is good, that Jesus is, so is king. But when it comes to other things that society says, then we step back and we're mm-hmm. quiet. Mm-hmm. But it's like, okay, what about David? Um, not David, Daniel, Abednego, and Shadrach that Which are in Babylon, in Babylon, the mm-hmm. city where um, Nebuchadnezzar was like, yo, bow down and worship this idol. Mm-hmm. And they were like, no. They had that conviction that like, nah, bro, like, mm-hmm. yeah, this is an idol that you created, but my king is greater than this idol. Exactly. And they were like, nah, I'm not bowing down, you might as well throw me in the fire. Very very oh, sorry. Mm-hmm. And then, um, yeah, so our identity is found in God because he created us in his image. I remember I was watching um, on one of the talks that I did with my friend Marlies. We did about sexuality and like LGBTQ and all of that. And um, I was watching this video to prepare for that talk. And one of the things that Jackie said is like, the reason why God has authority over sexuality is because he created it. You cannot have authority over something you didn't create. That's true. So, I don't, I, I wish we can, Deep down, right. deeper into right. the, the the dysfunctionalism of human beings to think that I have authority over mm. my sexuality, mm. but you didn't create it. I think it goes all the way back to the, the garden. It exactly. goes all the way back to the knowledge, the fruit of the knowledge of the good and evil. Because once we ate that, it was a matter of doesn't matter who you are, your original state of being. Like I remember watching Jackie Lee, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. which she also mentioned that with her. The desires of being homosexual is not like they disappeared. She has to continuously die to self every single day, which yep. is something we all do. Sometimes it's not in, in the capacity of yeah, sexuality. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes it's in the capacity of addictions. That's it's true. in the capacity of um, the way you speak to people. Like some of us are naturally ghetto, and you just want to scream and shout and swear at everyone. But because of the conviction of Holy Spirit and that yeah. you belong to the Creator. Those are the things that a lot of people, we don't, we don't want to accept that. We don't want to accept that God wants to lead us and he knows best. That's what the enemy gets you. Is God really that good? Mm. Is he really that good that he would deny you of this nice thing? Like, it's still the same concept over and over again. And I'll touch on that, I'll touch on that. But, um, okay. (laughs) <laughs> You're just stealing my nose. I'm so fine. sorry. But yeah, no, it's fine because I like the fact that like it shows that we're in sync, that yeah. we are literally on the same page. Because that's exactly like, for instance, um, I covered on, for instance, the fall of mankind. They are color coded, guys. Just, just so you know. Sorry, the notes are color coded. <laughs> literally, I <laughs> am a highlighter, babes. Okay, but babe, I am a highlight. Remind me. I just read mm. this two hours ago, but anyway. Mm. So the fall of mankind, we all know this, right? Yeah. The infamous Eve ate the apple and it was done, right? And like you said, the devil, like you know, in Ecclesiastes said, nothing is new under the sun. Think the devil, you know, when scripture says God is the same yesterday, today, and forever, so is Satan. So is the devil. He's he doesn't change. He's still a deceiver. 
believer. He's okay. saving, killing, and destroying. Literally, mm-hmm. that's just that. So, like, obviously, Genesis 3, the whole shebang, right? And mm-hmm. in verse 1, this is just like a few of my interpretations of like what stood out to me. Mm-hmm. So, like, in verse 1, um, okay, in verse 1, this is what I wrote that. Satan wanted Eve to doubt the word of God. Mm-hmm. He did this with Jesus as well. Mm-hmm. So the first thing that the devil will do is doubt the word of God. Because the minute he gets you out of the word of God, you're mm-hmm. doomed for destruction. Yep. He knows that if I can get you out of the will of God, baby mm-hmm. is a rap. Uh, he takes the sword that you're supposed to use to kill him with. He just takes it out of your hands. Exactly. He's like, fight. Exactly. You have nothing else to fight with. Do you get what I'm saying? Yeah, the yeah, guys, yeah. guys. So the first thing he'll make you doubt, and I reference to Matthew 4 verse 1 to 11 where um, Jesus was in the wilderness and the devil tempted him. That's like, oh, if you're really the son of God, da 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 Because Satan is a deceiver. Mm. The devil will lie to you, right? We see that in 2 Corinthians 11 verse 14, it says that the devil disguised himself as an angel of light. John 8 verse 44, where it says that he is the father of lies. Exactly. My sister, I'm getting there. I'm just marinating. Right now, we're eating starter. <laughs> this is the starter. This is the appetizer. Mm. Oh, appetizer, sorry, not appetizer. Hey, my sister. My sister. But yeah, so, uh, okay, verse 6, right? This is where Eve saw that the fruit is good and pleasing mm. and that it had wisdom. And like the Lord told me that the apple that God warned Eve about looked appealing to her. Hmm. It looked desirable. Like sin is desirable. And that's the same thing with human nature. Sin is desirable to us. We crave rebellion. We crave sinful nature. Same goes for zodiac signs. Same hmm. goes with Enneagram. Same goes with so many other practices, yoga, meditation, all of that. It looks appealing. It hmm. looks Ooh, this is nice. Let me get to know myself a bit more. But the catch is, Satan is obviously deceiving you as the angel of light by making you seek your identity elsewhere outside of the word of God. Literally. Literally outside of the word of God. So these things, these zodiac signs, and I think Christians don't understand because obviously they're still being deceived, but they don't understand the danger of it. It's because the minute... The devil convinces you that, oh, this is who you are. And obviously, familiar spirits, demons, and all of that. And that's why these people still make money in the new age industry. But the minute he makes, like, deceives you that, oh, this is who you are, you will step outside of the will of God and you will not become the person that God ordained you to be from the beginning. Yeah. You will not be a threat to the kingdom of darkness because you're now part of his squad. Like, oh my God. And when you step out of the will of God, you step out of the army of God. Exactly. You step out of protection. You step out of protection. You're literally like, well, you're on your own now. My full armor, here's my salvation, here's the the shield of faith, here's the sword. It's like you literally you strip yourself naked exactly. and stand outside. And you're like, well, devil, here I am. Yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly. So I remember, like, as I was placing, um, okay, 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 okay. <laughs> like just coming back, coming back. Oh my God. Do you know that? Remember, we have a limit on both sides. I'm checking the time. Like, this one is 13 minutes. That side, I think, is like five minutes left. Okay, let me just wrap so it people up. People on YouTube, if you guys want to catch the full episode, you can click down in the link. Um, it's going yes. to be found in the anchor. So if it like stops at any time. Just know that the full episode is available on Anchor. We thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe. If you guys enjoy these kind of sit down stuff, yes, also guys. in the comment section. And comment what stood out to you. Comment your thoughts on this. Comment what do you think we're headed to as a society. As crazy as it looks, but um, what we're showing our kids. You can comment on that also. That's a whole other conversation on its own. Don't like, because that's the thing but yeah like exactly that like the way the devil is deceiving mm. by these theories now about your sexuality this is who you are da, 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 all these things and it's literally so sad because i'm like i think that's one thing that you know, it bores me so much it's really. much yo i get so annoyed because i'm like the devil is literally brainwashing mm. people to think a certain way and it's all about feel good messages, self-motivation messages, you can do it manifested babes, da 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 And I'm like... In what spirit? Where are you getting it from? That's the thing. Because that is the thing. Guys, yeah, yeah, yeah. God is the only one. You Okay. You can only find your true identity in Christ. Why? 
because Christ remains the same. Christ is consistent. He never changes. He is the firm foundation. If your identity is based outside that, it's led by opinions, it's mm. led by feelings, yeah. it's not consistent, and it will not sustain you. Mm. Period. You will always, that's what I'm saying in the beginning in Genesis, where God is like, let us make mankind in our image. God created us in such a way that we need Him. There's a God shaped hole. There is a God shaped, we need Him. We mm. need love. Even though we're in the, you wonder why people commit suicide? You wonder why the most successful people still kill themselves? Feel unfulfilled. Because even though they've obtained all the things worldly that the riches. world's worldly riches that's supposed to give you identity, those things are temporary first and foremost. Mm -hmm. They're not sustainable first and foremost. They give you a temporary high, mm -hmm. but they don't satisfy you. There's a favorite verse of mine, Jeremiah 2 verse 13, where mm -hmm. God is, oh guys, that book of Jeremiah. Mm -hmm. Very powerful yeah. but that verse where God is telling rebuking um, the Jews and saying you have forsaken me the fountain of living waters and replaced me with broken cisterns what are we doing broken you know what a broken system is a broken system is like a okay let me just say you see a hand and you're putting like sand in it and it seeps through that's what you're replacing God with you're replacing God, the living water that never runs out, mm -hmm. that never dries out, that gives life to, to dry plants, to dead plants, that resurrects and sustains you and fills you and so satisfies on. you. Yeah. And you replace it with something that is unsustainable. Mm -hmm. It runs out. Time and time after again, you try, it's like a bucket with holes. You fill it up with water, it runs out. You fill every time you fill it up, you're like, okay, I hope to get satisfied. It's the same thing with the woman at the well. She had so many husbands, and you could tell like still she unfulfilled. was still unfulfilled. She didn't know who she was. And Jesus was like, if you drink the water that I give you, you will never thirst again. That's true. What does that mean? If you drink from me, if you put your identity in me, if you seek me, you will never thirst again. You will never need to be validated by the world mm. do you know what breaks my heart seeing girls on instagram yeah preach, preach. and they are wearing what <laughs> nothing yeah. seeing girls doing only fans and they're wearing <laughs> what yo guys this world whole other topic on instagram <laughs> literally but that's the thing that i'm getting to is that mm. unfortunately in this world like i said we're replacing god with things that can never satisfy us it's true that can never, ever, ever, ever satisfy us, right? Mm -hmm. And then, um, okay, and also, like, one of the things I also wanted to highlight is the identity crisis within the body of Christ. See, you see you, exactly. This is, this is the scripture, this is what I was, like, my, my devotional today was yeah. on loving, like, each other in the house of Christ, mm. the jealousy. And it was speaking on understanding your body, like, which part of the body you are and like your identity in terms of how uniquely God has placed mm -hmm. you. That if you are the finger and you refuse yeah. to participate like a finger, you wanna speak. Yeah. You wanna you are you are causing dysfunction. That's true. And I'm like you guys. That's true. Hey. Cause I remember like even as I was preparing, I was thinking, well obviously like I was in a whole book of the more and the book of Jeremiah, like oh my gosh. That whole <laughs> book covers the topic. But like, even in the book of Jeremiah, what broke my heart, I remember while reading the book like last year, mm -hmm. what broke my heart most was like Jeremiah was appointed, was a prophet appointed by God, right? To be the spokesperson to God. Mm -hmm. The people that you would expect to understand that were against him and were trying to kill him. Come on. Which was the priest, the exactly. prophets in the house of the Lord. There's this verse in Jeremiah, like mm -hmm. I, I, I know I, I forgot where it is, but you know this verse where God is like, um, if the prophets were seeking my voice mm -hmm. or seeking my counsel in the quiet time, in in their quiet time, mm -hmm. then they'd be able to like say the right things because even um, Jeremiah seven. You can read the whole chapter, Jeremiah 14 verse 14. There's, I think it's Jeremiah 14 verse 14 where God is like, you guys are prophesying a lie in my name. Because yeah. Jeremiah is saying one thing, saying that y'all better repent. And people are like, no, y'all better repent. Like, oh, y'all better repent. <laughs> or Jesus, oh, God is going to bring, um, oh God is going to send Babylon and you, mm. you know, the cup of wrath and all of that. Mm. But the prophets and the priests was 
speaking prosperity gospel jesus let's not get it <laughs> but they were speak they were preaching prosperity they were like nah y'all are good condoning idol worship i'm like but that's the thing it's like mm. now yes we understand like the world needs jesus to understand the identity but the christ also ah, the, christ, the church is also oh. in need of it more because time and time again we see who does the world belong to you know God created this world for us and mm-hmm. he made sure. And I think that the other thing that we always misinterpret is that concept of how much access is the devil given to us. Mm-hmm. And cuz God does give us like does give the the enemy access to your life. I mean, there's Job. Yeah. Look at Job. And like I'm reading the book of Job and I'm like, yo, Jesus, if you do this to me, it's I'm, all right. I am running. I'm right. running. And just speaking into that, it means that when we are disobedient, when we walk away, when we fall into sin, whether we know it or not, we experience the consequences. Sure, we will receive mercy, we will receive the love, we will receive the grace and goodness of God, but the consequences are still present. That's and when true. it comes to your identity, what the enemy does, he will do exactly what he's been doing for over the like millions of centuries when you've existed, which is to make you doubt the goodness of God. Once he makes you doubt how good your God is and how good what he says about you is, yeah. he's like, "Ha, I have you." There we go. Which is exactly what he does to everyone. He tells yeah. you that well, you were created like this. You were made in this way. Like some That's of us true. are created in a specific way. And yeah. when it comes to identity, Jackie Hill Perry is always Ooh, like my the, fav- oh the my amazing goodness. lady I speak about yes. because her testimony is beyond church. It's beyond mm-hmm. the confinement of yeah. I received Christ in my bedroom. She didn't mm-hmm. receive Christ in front of the whole church building yeah. or a congregation of people. God came and met her personally. Yeah. Which means there's people out there that are walking with a certain identity crisis mm-hmm. where they're waiting for God to encounter them. And the beauty of God, He will encounter you. The question is, will you obey when He does? That's you know, um, and I just want to hear your voice. Yeah, just that. took everything. <laughs> And you have like, a whole page. You page. know what? I have three pages for my lead said everything. And I'm like, Lord. Wow. Okay, let me let me see. Um but yeah, like I definitely understand what you're saying. But like I felt like when I wrote like I went not necessarily into depth, mm. but because I didn't have time to be fair. I was like, okay, God, you want me to break this down, but time is not on my side. I know you mm. exist outside of time, but I'm limited by time, so you know, but um because I wrote like the so identity, according to Google, mm. is the fact of being who or what a person or thing is, mm. right? So it's more inward based yeah. than outward based, True. right? And obviously, I quoted Genesis one verse twenty six, where God is like, "Let us make mankind in our image." That's like the most famous verse. And then I wondered, I was like, "Okay, Lord, like in our image, what does that mean? Like, you created us in our image." People think like we physically mm-hmm. look like God, God but yeah. God is talking about like attributes that mm-hmm. we carry. Because human That's beings, true. we desire love. We have moral, like there's like a moral standard that we live by. Like we know right and wrong, mm-hmm. and that's something that atheists won't necessarily. That's the thing. Like I remember, like I used to. There was a point when I got saved. Like I used to watch great, like Preston Perry. Mm-hmm. You go on the street. He's yeah. like. <laughs> Go on, people. Yes. I was that girl. I'm like, yo, put me in, coach. Put me in. Mm. So I know, like, one of the things that, like, he or necessarily what apologetics normally like go for is that if you are an atheist, you and you say murder is wrong. Who are you to say murder is wrong? That's true. Because you have no moral standard. That's so according true. to you, we are just baboons or cells that came in the air, and sense. literally you have mm. no moral standard because. So I was like, wow, like that goes back to what I was saying. Like, I mean, like Christians should have at least that, like, necessarily, like, apolo- like soft apologetics mm. where they know that, okay, this is the God that I serve, but why? Because mm. that's how the devil gets us. Because they're like, yeah, God is good, that Jesus is so king. But when it comes to other things that society says, then we step back and we're see. quiet. See. But it's like, okay, what about David? Um, not David, Daniel, Abednego, and Shadrach Who that were in Babylon. In Great. Babylon, the mm-hmm. city where um, Nebuchadnezzar was like, yo, bow down and worship this idol. Mm-hmm. And they were like, no. They had that conviction that, like, nah, bro, like, mm-hmm. yeah, this is an idol that you created, but my king is greater than this idol. Exactly. And they were like, nah, I'm not bowing down, you might as well throw me in the fire. 
Your yeah, eyebrow. Oh, sorry. Mm -hmm. And then, um, yeah, so our identity is found in God because he created us in his image. I remember I was watching um, on one of the talks that I did with my friend Marlies. We did about sexuality and like LGBTQ and all of that. And um, I was watching this video to prepare for that talk. And one of the things that Jackie said is like, the reason why God has authority over sexuality is because he created it. You cannot have authority over something you didn't create. That's true. So, I don't. I, I wish we can deep down yes. deeper into yes. the 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 dysfunctionalism of human beings to think that I have authority over mm. my sexuality, mm. but you didn't create it. I think it goes all the way back to the, the garden. It exactly. goes all the way back to the knowledge, mm. the fruit of the knowledge of the good and evil. Because once we ate that, it was a matter of doesn't matter who you are, your original state of being. Like I remember watching Jackie Hill, yeah, yeah, yeah. which she also mentioned that with her, the desires of being a homosexual is not like they disappeared. She has to continuously die to self every single day, which yeah. is something we all do. Sometimes it's not in the capacity of yeah, sexuality. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes it's in the capacity of addictions. That's it's in true. the capacity of um, the way you speak to people. Like some of us are naturally ghetto and you just want to scream and shout and swear at everyone. But because of the conviction of Holy Spirit and that yeah. you belong to the Creator, those are the things that a lot of people, we don't, we don't want to accept that. We don't want to accept that God wants to lead us and He knows best. That's what the enemy gets you. Is God really that good? Mm. Is He really that good that He would deny you of this nice thing? Like, it's still the same concept over and over again. And I'll touch on that, I'll touch on that. But, um, okay. <laughs> <laughs> You're just stealing my nose. I'm so sorry. <laughs> but yeah, no, it's fine because I like the fact that like it shows that we're in sync, that yeah. we are literally on the same page. Because that's exactly like, for instance, um, I covered on, for instance, the fall of mankind. They're color coded, guys. Just, just so you know. Sorry, the notes, notes are color coded. <laughs> literally, I <laughs> am a highlighter, babes. Okay, but they, I am a highlighter. Remind me, I just heard mm. this two hours ago, but anyway. Mm. So the fall of mankind, we all know this, right? Yeah. The infamous, Eve ate the apple and it was done, right? And like I said, the devil, like, you know in Ecclesiastes said, nothing is new under the sun. I think the devil, you know when scripture says, God is the same yesterday, today and forever. So it's Satan. So it's the devil. He's he doesn't liar. change. He's still a deceiver. He's, He's still stealing, right. killing, and destroying. Literally, that's just that. So, like, obviously, Genesis three, the whole shebang, right? And mm -hmm. in verse one, this is just like a few of my interpretations of like what stood out to me. Mm -hmm. So, like, in verse one, um, okay, in verse one is what I wrote that Satan wanted Eve to doubt the word of God. Mm -hmm. He did this with Jesus as well. Mm -hmm. So the first thing that the devil will do is doubt the word of God. Because the minute he gets you out of the will of God, you're mm -hmm. doomed for destruction. Yep. He knows that if I can get you out of the will of God, baby, oh. it's a wrap. Oh. He takes the sword he that you're supposed to use to kill him with. He just takes it out of your hands. Exactly. He's like, fight. Exactly. You have nothing else to fight with. Do you get what oh. I'm saying? Yeah. The yeah. Guys, mm -hmm. guys. So the first thing he'll make you doubt, and I reference to Matthew 4, verse 1 to 11, where um, Jesus was in the wilderness and the devil tempted him that said, oh, if you're really the son of God, da 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 Because Satan is a deceiver. Mm. The devil will lie to you, right? We see that in 2 Corinthians 11, verse 14, it says that the devil disguised himself as an angel of light. John 8, verse 44, where it says that he's the, the father of lies. Exactly. My sister, I'm getting there. I'm just marinating. Right now, we are eating starter. <laughs> This is the starter. This is the appetizer. Mm. Ooh, appetizer, sorry, not appetizer. Hey, my sister. My sister. But yeah, so, uh, okay, verse 6, right? This is where Eve saw that the fruit is good and pleasing mm. and that it had wisdom. And like the Lord told me that the apple that God warned Eve about looked appealing to her. It looked desirable. Like sin is desirable, and that is the same thing with human nature. Sin is desirable to us. We crave rebellion. We crave sinful nature. Same goes for zodiac signs. Same goes with enneagrams. Same goes with so many other practices: yoga, meditation, all of that. It looks appealing. It mm -hmm. looks 
oh this is life let me get to know myself a bit more but the mm-hmm. catch is satan is obviously deceiving you as the angel of light by making you seek your identity elsewhere outside of the word of god literally outside of the word of god so these things these zodiac signs and i think christians don't understand because obviously they're still being deceived but they don't understand the danger of it is because the minute the devil convinces you that oh this is who you are and obviously familiar spirits demons and all of that and that's why these people still make money in the new age industry but the minute he makes like deceives you that oh this is who you are you will step outside of the will of god and you will not become the person that god ordained you to be from the beginning yeah you will not be a threat to the kingdom of darkness because you're now part of his squad like oh my God. and when you step out of the wood of god you step out of the army of god exactly you step out of protection you step out of protection you're literally like well you're on your own now my full step. armor here's my salvation here's the the shield of faith here's the sword it's like you literally you strip yourself naked exactly and stand outside and you're like well devil here i am yeah, 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 yeah. exactly so i remember like as i was placing up uh, okay okay, okay, okay. <laughs> like just coming back coming back oh my god do you know that remember we have a limit on both sides i'm checking the time like this one is 30 minutes that's how i think it's like five minutes left okay let me just wrap so people it up. on youtube if you guys want to catch the full episode you can click down in the link um it's going yes. down in the anchor so if it like stops at any time just know that the full episode is available on Anchor. We thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe. If you guys enjoy these kind of sit down yes. stuff, also comment in the comment section. And comment what stood out to you. Comment your thoughts on this. Comment what do you think we're headed to as a society. As crazy as it looks, but um, what we're showing our kids. You can comment on that also. <sighs> That's a whole other conversation on its own. The link because that's the thing but yeah like exactly that like the way the devil is deceiving mm. by these theories now about your sexuality this is who you are da, 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 all these things and it's literally so sad because i'm like i think that's one thing that you know, it bores me so much it breaks my you, heart yo i get so annoyed because i'm like the devil is literally brainwashing mm. people to think a certain way and it's all about feel good messages self motivation messages you can do it manifested babes da, 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 da. and i'm like in what spirit where are you getting it from that's the thing <laughs> that is the thing <laughs> guys yeah, yeah, yeah. god is the only one you okay you can only find your true identity in christ why because christ remains the same christ is consistent he never changes <laughs> he is the firm foundation if your identity is based outside that, it's led by opinions, it's mm. led by feelings, yeah. it's not consistent, and it will not sustain you. Mm. Period. You will always, that's what I'm saying in the beginning, in Genesis, where God is like, let us make mankind in our image. God created us in such a way that we need him. There's a God-shaped hole. There is a God-shaped, we need him, we mm. need love. Even though we're in the, you wonder why people commit suicide? You wonder why the most successful people still kill themselves? Feel unfulfilled. Because even though they've obtained all the things worldly that the riches. world's worldly riches that's supposed to give you identity, those things are temporary first and foremost. Mm-hmm. They're not sustainable first and mm-hmm. foremost. They give you a temporary high, mm-hmm. but they don't satisfy you. There's a favorite verse of mine, Jeremiah 2 verse 13, where mm-hmm. God is, oh guys, that book of Jeremiah. <laughs> very powerful yeah. but that verse where god is telling rebuking um the jews and saying you have forsaken me the fountain of living waters and replaced me with broken cisterns what are we doing broken you know what a broken system is a broken system is like a okay let me just say you see a hand and you're putting like sand in it and it seeps through that's what you're replacing god with you're replacing God, the living water that never runs out, mm. that never dries out, that gives life to to dry plants, to dead plants, that resurrects and sustains you and fills you and Come satisfies on. you. Yeah. And you replace it with something that is unsustainable. Mm. It runs out. Time and time after again, you try it's like a bucket with holes. You fill it up with water, it runs out. You fill every time you fill it up, you're like, okay, I hope to get satisfied. The same thing with the woman at the well. She had so many husbands, and you could tell like she's still unfulfilled. She didn't know who she was. 
And Jesus was like, if you drink the water that I give you, you will never thirst again. That's true. What does that mean? If you drink from me, if you put your identity in me, if you seek me, you will never thirst again. You will never need to be validated by the world. Mm. Do you know what breaks my heart? Seeing girls on Instagram, yeah. and they are wearing what? <laughs> Nothing. Yeah. Seeing girls doing OnlyFans, and they're wearing <clears throat> what? Yo, girl, this world. <laughs> whole other topic on Instagram. <laughs> Literally. But that's the thing that I'm getting to is that mm. unfortunately in this world, like I said, we're replacing God with things that can never satisfy us. It's true. That can never, ever, ever, ever satisfy us, right? Mm. And then, um, okay, and also like one of the things I also wanted to highlight is the identity crisis within the body of Christ. See, you see you. Exactly. This is this is a scripture, this is what I was like my my devotional today was yeah. on loving like each other in the house of mm. Christ of jealousy. And it was speaking on understanding your body, like which part of the body you are and like your identity in terms of how uniquely God has placed mm. you. That if you are the finger and you refuse yeah. to participate like a finger, you wanna speak. Yeah. You wanna you are you are causing dysfunction. That's true. And I'm like you. That's true. Hey, because I remember, like, even as I was preparing, I was thinking, well, obviously, like, I was in a whole book of Hashem Lord and Lord, the book of Jeremiah, like, oh my gosh, that whole <laughs> book covers this topic. <laughs> but <laughs> even in the book of Jeremiah, what broke my heart, I remember while reading the book, like, last year, mm-hmm. what broke my heart most was, like, Jeremiah was appointed, was a prophet appointed by God, right, to be the spokesperson to God. Mm-hmm. The people that you would expect to understand that, were against him and were trying to kill him. Come on. Which was the priest, the exactly. prophet in the house of the Lord. There's this verse in Jeremiah, like mm-hmm. I, I, I know I, I forgot where it is, but you know this verse where God is like, um, if the prophets were seeking my voice mm-hmm. or seeking my counsel in the quiet time, in, in their quiet time, mm-hmm. then they'd be able to like say the right things because even um, Jeremiah seven. You can read the whole chapter, Jeremiah 14 verse 14. There's, I think it's Jeremiah 14 verse 14 where God is like, you guys are prophesying a lie in my name. Because yeah. Jeremiah is saying one thing, saying that y'all better repent. And people are like, no, y'all no, better repent. All. Y'all better repent or, <laughs> Jesus, or God is going to bring, um, oh God is going to send Babylon and mm. you, you know, the cup of wrath and all of that. Mm. But the prophets and the priests was speaking prosperity gospel Jesus let's not get it <laughs> but they were speak they were preaching prosperity they were like nah y'all are good condoning idol worship I'm like but that's the thing it's like mm. now yes we understand like the world needs Jesus to understand the identity but the Christ also ah, the Christ the church is also oh. in need of it more because time and time again we see